Houston making some renovations to the camper and today we just wanted to show you the power consumption of some of the items you might be considering bringing with you on your trip. What we have here is the Yeti 1400. It has 1400 watts which means basically that if you have an item that pulls 1400 watts you'll be able to run this for exactly one hour and if you have an item that pulls 140 watts then you'll be able to run it for exactly 10 hours. 140 watts is also pretty much what we can expect our solar panels to pull in an hour under optimal conditions. We have two 100 watt solar panels. Optimally, they'll each pull probably 70 or 75 each uh, with direct sun overhead. So basically it should it would take, under optimal conditions, about 10 hours for two 100 watt panels to charge this from zero to full. Okay, let's get started. First thing, in order to use the Yeti, we have to turn on the AC power supply. See here we have an input and output. So it's gonna be constantly showing you how much power it's pulling in and how much power it's giving out. When we turn on the AC, the output jumps up from zero to four. So it's gonna constantly be pulling about four watts an hour as long as you leave this on. So when you're storing the Yeti for an extended period of time, you definitely should turn this off. So the first thing that you might want to bring with you is a heater. Uh, unfortunately, converting electricity to heat is extremely inefficient. And uh, unless you have like a massive power bank and tons of solar panels, you'll probably end up going with a propane heater if you're going off the grid for an extended period of time. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in. Right now you see that the base output is four watts. As soon as I plug it in and turn it on, this is just with the fan running. It's gonna jump up to 48 watts. Again, this means that for every hour that I leave this fan on, it's gonna pull 48 watts from my 1400 watt reserve. I'm going to turn the heat on, and you see that the output immediately spiked to 1400 watts, which is insane. It means that basically we can run this heater for only one hour before it completely drain our battery. So even a very small space heater like this is not really a good idea. If you really need a heat source and you're off the grid, you're better off using a, a propane heater. So you, if you don't want to go the propane route, you can get an electric blanket. From what I've read, they can pull as little as like 150 to 300 watts. Okay, so what we have here is an espresso, espresso maker. Destiny is a big fan of this because it can pop out an espresso and like from going from like cold water to a fully like pressure cooked espresso in like 30 seconds or so. You can see that this was pulling about 1200 watts. However, this espresso took only 20 seconds to make. My battery should still be at 100%. Sometimes it glitches up a little bit until it goes below 90. Probably a good estimate. This probably only took something like 30 to 40 watts to make this espresso. Okay, so next we have our Panasonic infrared oven. Uh, this thing, it's totes dope because it gets like super hot instantly. There's no preheating involved. The heating elements are like these two infrared bulbs on the top and the bottom. I don't really know how it all works, but it's like super powerful. We actually decided to get this oven uh, instead of a microwave. This thing pulls between 13 to 1400 watts, which is as much or even more than a large microwave. However, the cool thing about it is that the bulbs heat things up super fast. And once it gets to the desired temperature, which only takes like 10 seconds or so, then it shuts the bulbs off. So yes, this thing pulls 1300 watts when it's on, but in order to maintain that heat, I would say this bulb only stays running between 50 to 60% of the time. It's actually quite efficient. It can cook toast in about a minute or like a bagel in like two minutes. So we're gonna do probably another video showing you guys how to cook with this thing. But right now, we're just gonna look at its power consumption. Let's see, I'm going to set this to 425 degrees and we'll run that for one, one and a half minutes. Oh, I'm not supposed to look at infrared light directly. It's shot all the way up to over 1300. And this is getting extremely hot right now. Like when we run this for like two minutes, it heats up like the entire corner of our camper. 
So you see that once it got up to the proper temperature, that took about 10 seconds, it shuts off the heat source. And it's gonna turn it back on only to, to maintain the heat temperature inside of there. And that noise you hear is from our battery. When we start pulling like water that's too high from it, like anything over a thousand watts, it's gonna automatically turn on the fan to keep the lithium ion batteries cool inside. You can see that this, I've been pulling at 1400 watts. Generally it will only cost us maybe like 30 or 40 watts to like make like some toast and a hot dog, which is actually very efficient. So if you're thinking about getting an oven, definitely recommend an infrared one because it's far more efficient than having like a traditional toaster oven. Because while we're doing heat, just thought it'd be fun to try out here straightener. Uh, Destiny doesn't bring these with her, but we've never actually tested it. So it might actually be like super efficient. So what I understand these have to heat up first. Okay, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now it's heating up, and as it's heating up, oh, it's only pulling like 260 watts. That's not bad. Okay, 100 watts, cool. So that only took like 10 seconds. Now it's taking about, ooh, taking about 140 watts to maintain this temperature. So actually, not great. It didn't take a lot of heat to heat it up, but it's taking like a lot of heat just to maintain this temperature. Oh, now it's going down to like 48 to 100. Hey, that's pretty good. Next we have Destiny's MacBook. When it comes to like things like computers and phones that have rechargeable batteries, it's not really about how much you're pulling from here. It's more about like the capacity of this battery. So from what I read, this has a like 54 watt hour battery or something, which means that it, to charge this from zero to full is gonna pull 54 watts, a little more than 54 watts from here, accounting for like, you know, inefficiency, because you're just transferring electricity from one battery to another. This MacBook is fully charged right now though, so we're gonna look, take a look at how much power it takes just to run a MacBook without charging the battery. As soon as I plug it in, it's gonna jump up to 39 watts. Okay. So there, I think it's holding steady now at 20 watts. The battery is fully charged. So if you are not charging a battery, you'll be able to run this MacBook for 70 hours straight, which is pretty good. All right, so next we're just gonna try out, plug in some things that you probably won't want to bring. We're just gonna see for fun how much power that they put. First up is an iron. And turn it up to cotton. Wow, 1500 watts just to heat up this thing. Very high. Okay, next item is a rice cooker, staple of every Asian household. Also horrifically inefficient. So just to have it on the keep warm setting, drains about 93 watts. So it'll completely drain my battery in like 14 hours. Uh, but if I make it cook, the heat's gonna jump up to a little less than 700 watts, which doesn't seem that bad compared to the other heating elements, but when you consider that this takes this thing like 20 to 25 minutes to make a pot of rice, you're gonna be using like about 300 watts or so just to make a pot of rice. All right, let's try out a blender. That was a pretty big blender. Blend. Ah. Oh. Blenders are actually very efficient. They would be great to have if they didn't take up so much space. That only pulled about 133 watt hours while it was blending. Okay, next we're gonna try out this uh, nifty little monitor that we have. It's like a super lightweight portable monitor. I got it for like 150 bucks on Amazon or something. Let's plug it in and see what it gets. And it jumps to five watts. Okay. Yeah, we can reasonably say that while it's on, it only pulls five watts. So to run this little monitor only takes as much electricity as it takes to just leave your AC converter on. Okay, next we are going to look at this gigantic 35 inch widescreen LG monitor. So if you like wanna watch some like real TV, I'm not gonna go any bigger than that because if you're gonna bring like a full-size TV, you're probably not worried about power consumption very much. Right, let's plug it in and see what it gets. Fifty watts, give or take. Just running this monitor, which is 
about five times more costly than running that little 13 inch monitor I have. So you'll be able to run this for about 28 hours off a of full 1400 watt battery. Now we're gonna plug in the Apple TV simultaneously. Love, Love Death and Robots, this is like a super dope show by the way, you should definitely check it out. So this really only adds about five or six or maybe seven watts. Anything under 10 watts is considered basically negligible. Anything over like 20 or 30 you really have to worry about. If you want to watch TV in your camper with an Apple TV on a 35 inch monitor, it's going to pull approximately 50 watts every hour. Alright, here's my phone. It is a Pixel 2. I believe the battery when converted to like watts, watt hours is like 20, but I'm not sure. Don't take my word on that. I'm just gonna plug it in and see. So my phone supports fast charging. It's gonna charge to the full in like about an hour. Because right now it's only at 62%. Pulls 10 watts. I think the actual battery itself probably holds like 15 watts. So thanks for watching. Now we gotta go put all this stuff back where we found it. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any other stuff that you're curious about, how much power it pulls, you can just read the packaging. But if you want us to test it out, you can put it in the comments below and we'll test it for you. Thanks for watching.